Hey everyone, Pastor Kerry here. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining. Join, join, joining me today. Don't wait. I'm still here, at least for now. And besides, that's not the way it actually happens when things get taken down from social media. In fact, you've probably seen those notices that pop up on Facebook or Twitter when a post is removed because it didn't pass a fact check or was inconsistent with company values, or even their social or political bias. Now, I'm not here to address any particular issue, and I don't mean to get overly dramatic, but simply to illustrate a point and then to offer a challenge. Because there will likely come a time when you and I won't be able to say or express certain things in the public forum because they're deemed as divisive or hateful or not of the proper political persuasion or just because somebody feels it's not in the best interest of the public. That kind of restriction is already a reality in many parts of the world, so it would be short-sighted to think that it could never happen to us. In fact, I've taught and preached things since I've been at New Hope that would be unlawful in other parts of the world or even just across our borders. Now, I'm not saying it's coming next month or next year in the next few years, but it is coming. In fact, it's already here in many ways, but when it becomes more prevalent, to the point where certain views and forms of speech uh, are restricted. How will that level of censorship affect you? Uh, would it change your life at all? Would it diminish your uh, faith? Would it alter your values or your views about God? How would it affect your relationships? Would there be any risk to your reputation or even your livelihood? Uh, would anyone even be able to tell what you believe about God or the Bible or your worldview in general? Uh, would you even attempt to speak out? The bottom line, would your faith be strong enough to stand if you felt that kind of intensified pressure or even the threat of persecution? You know, it's easy for us in our current society to take for granted the freedoms we have in regard to our faith and our access to things that can strengthen and inspire our faith. But if the day comes when significant restrictions are placed on our religious liberties, how would that affect your life? It's really something to think about. In fact, more so, it's something we need to prepare for. Uh, are we truly growing in our faith and our relationship with God? Is your devotion to Him strong enough to stand and endure through whatever comes our way? Uh, do you know God's Word and are you familiar enough with His voice that you'll be able to discern what's true and what's not? Will you be able to sift through all the delusion and deception that the Bible says is going to be rampant uh, in the end times? And I don't say this to discourage you or to scare you, but to challenge you to keep growing spiritually and invest time and attention, not only your own personal spiritual development, but also in the spiritual lives of your family and those with whom God has given you influence to keep your priorities straight and to stay focused on eternal things rather than temporary things. And that doesn't mean that we check out of society or we get so focused on heaven that we don't do any good while still on earth. Uh, in fact, if we expect that Jesus is coming soon, we should have even more urgency to make a difference in others' lives so far as spreading God's love and message is concerned. And I'm not going to get into all the things that we need to prioritize in our lives, but simply to consider the opportunities that we have as a church. Uh, let's never take for granted the access we have to worship and to hear and study God's Word together through things like the classes we'll be starting back up on Sundays and Wednesdays, and, and to take advantage of all the resources we offer in person and online that can help us grow spiritually, including things like these devotionals and messages that you may have missed. But even more importantly, as it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, to let's, not, let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day approaching. You see, when tougher times come and our faith does encounter greater resistance, the things that are going to sustain us are our personal devotion to God and our relationship with other believers, with those who can assure us that, that we don't face these things alone, that we're in this together. And we're going to encourage each other and challenge one another uh, and strengthen each other. You see, because God never expects us to do this alone. We don't thrive if we keep to ourselves and never reach out and encourage others in their faith. 
But that means in not neglecting our personal time with God, time and prayer and his word, because that's how faith grows and becomes stronger and is able to flourish under any conditions, including uh, any attempts to silence our faith and destroy our devotion to God and to his word and to the church. Uh, anyway, uh, that's some intense stuff and that's enough from me, but but I've been uh, pretty brief, so why not take just a few more minutes on your own to open your Bible, uh, to meditate on a passage in his word, and take time to pray for his strength and guidance in your life today and for whatever comes your way in the days ahead, because nothing can take away that freedom, that access we have to the God of the universe. So make the most of it now, and you'll have nothing to fear later.